Advanced Accounting 17B Intercompany Transfers for Machinery. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, email address, and website. We're going to talk about intercompany transfers, and I'd like to pick up on a blog posting I did, intercompany transfers of inventory for a game. And to start off with, let's go back quickly and talk about what is a consolidation. A consolidation means that we're combining the financials of two entities, a parent company that has invested in a subsidiary company, or the sub, as I'm going to call it. And at the end of a month or year, all parties, shareholders and creditors, and the companies themselves would like to see the combined results of the parent company and the sub. But we want to avoid double counting, which means we want to avoid financial uh, transactions that impact both companies. We don't want to double count them. Now, I do mention here that we have a term called upstream and downstream transactions. Upstream is a transaction from the sub to the parent up the chain. Downstream is from parent to the sub down the chain. Generally, the transactions you're going to hear about on intercompany transactions or transfers are handled the same way whether they're upstream or downstream. So this example is the sale of inventory between a parent company and a sub. So let's assume that a parent company, Parent Jeans is my parent company, buys 80% of a company called Sturdy Denim. And Sturdy happens to supply denim material to Parent Jeans so they can make blue jeans. So it's not unusual for a, a company to take an ownership interest in a supplier because they want a reliable denim supplier. So why not give my denim supplier more capital to operate by investing in them? A term that I wanted to mention that I'm not going to necessarily cover now or do anything with is called a non-controlling interest. And what I find is in consolidation, this is the issue in consolidation that most people forget about and don't do the accounting for. If Parent Jeans is buying 80% of Sturdy Denim, someone else, whether it's one entity or a bunch of people, owns the other 20% of Sturdy Denim. And we refer to those other owners as a non-controlling interest. It's abbreviated as an NCI. And you'll see more on non-controlling interests in other blog posts. So, scrolling down, let's do an example of selling inventory for a game. Sturdy the Sub sells $1,000 in denim to parent company. Sturdy's profit is 20% or $200. So on Sturdy owned the denim at a cost of $800 and sold it at a price of $1,000. They made a $200 profit. And what we're considering in this video is what needs to be eliminated when you consolidate the financials. Now, Bear in mind that on separate financials, one for set of financials for Sturdy Denim and one for Parent, everything would remain the same. That is, is that the sale from between Parent and Sub would remain in the records if we were looking at them separately. But in consolidation, we want to eliminate any profit on the transaction between the two companies because since we're combining their records, if we left the profit in there, you're going to see that there are some problems created. Said another way, we only want to include in consolidation transactions with third parties or the outside world, as I like to call it. So in consolidation only, Sturdy's profit is overstated by $200 due to the sale to the parent. On the parents' books, that inventory that they bought from Sturdy is overstated by $200 in consolidation. In other words, the value of the inventory on the parents' books is too high. So, in consolidation, we need to eliminate two things. We are going to debit net income to eliminate the sub's profit in the sale, debit to eliminate the income. We are going to credit inventory to eliminate 
that inflated value of the inventory that's on the parents books. I always put a note below an entry and it says in this note to eliminate the intercompany sale of inventory. And I'll mention again, it doesn't matter if it's upstream or downstream, the sale of the inventory would be eliminated in the same way even if it was the parent selling to the sub. Same direction. And by that I mean you would debit net income to reduce it to eliminate the profit and you would credit inventory to get rid of that higher inventory cost regardless of whether it was an upstream or a downstream transaction. So I think that's important to know. Things get a little more complicated when we have an asset that depreciates. So this next example is selling a piece of machinery for a game. The scenario starts off in the same way. We want to avoid double counting. So let's think about, in this case, Sturdy the Sub selling a piece of machinery to the parent. The book value on Sturdy's books, the seller, is $800. So for Sturdy, they sell it for 1000 they give up an asset with a book value of 800. Sturdy the sub sells the machine for a gain. And we've already seen that we need to eliminate that gain. But we also have to consider in this scenario depreciation. Because the machine's depreciating. And we'll assume that Sturdy the seller was depreciating the uh, machine at $100 a year. In consolidation, again, Sturdy and Parent are the same company. So just like we saw with the example with inventory, we are going to debit to remove the profit that the sub had when they sold the machinery to the parent. The machinery has an inflated value on the parent's books by $200. The value of the, of the machinery on the parent's books is too high. So we credit to reduce the value of the machinery. Now, the twist on machinery is, is that there's differences in depreciation. This is a difficult concept to get. If the asset is overstated on the parent's books when they buy it, then it's very likely that the depreciation, the amount they're depreciating is overstated because they're depreciating an asset that has a value that is too high in consolidation. So... Let's make numbers up, keep it simple, and say that the parent's depreciation for the year is $50 higher than it should be had the parent put the asset on their books at the same value as the sub. So to reverse a depreciation entry, you credit to reduce the depreciation expense, an expense is normally a debit. You debit to reduce the contra asset account called accumulated depreciation, and my note says to eliminate the machinery's excess depreciation. And so there's three things we've done. We've removed the gain on the sale of the machine. We've removed the excess value of the machine in the parent's books. And this entry has removed the excess depreciation of $50. So those are the three things we did with depreciation. That's as far as we'll get on this intercompany example, on the website stltest.net, which you'll see up here in the corner, I'm teaching the toughest accounting topics, upcoming live chats of the five areas where students have the most trouble at 2 o'clock in the afternoons this spring, and these will be ongoing courses. And I also wanted to mention that the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, is now available on Amazon.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.